Welcome to Core Cuts Today for February 17th, 2023. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now and give you my opinion on them. Now, these are my opinions. If you want to find out more, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment. I'll put a link to each story I talk about here so you can reinforce it yourself at corecardsnews.com and come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Before we get into it though, could you help me out? Could you help me grow this channel? Could you help us um, support all of our families here? All you have to do is let YouTube know, know you enjoy what we do here by hitting that subscribe button, hitting that thumbs up. YouTube knows to recommend our videos to more people, helping us grow, helping us support our families, and hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. All right, let's jump into it, starting off with our deal of the day. Amazon Prime's basic deal is our deal of the day today. If you spend $50 on Amazon basic items, including toilet paper, paper towels, coffee, and so much more over there, you can get an additional $20 off. This is a great way to stock up. When we ran the numbers, it was some of the best pricing and a variety of items out there we could find. When you take into account the additional 20% off you get when you spend $50 or more. Great way to stock up. I did this on some baby wipes recently. So check it out, link in the show notes down below. All right, first story. Uh, this cable TV company is shutting down its traditional TV service. Now, you may know this as Cable One. They rebranded recently, let me get the name, Sparklight Cable. So Cable One, to be more cool and hip and get away from the Cable One name, became Sparklight. And now they're telling their customers that you can no longer use a traditional cable box and a traditional cable um, TV interface. You now have to use their streaming only service, currently available on the Fire TV and Apple TV, no Roku support right now, but they're going market by market, sh fully shutting down their traditional TV service, not available. For a few years now, they've not been offering their traditional TV service to new customers. Now they're going to tell current customers, it's time to move to streaming or you're out. A few catches here, for example, it only works inside your home network. You can't take the Spotlight streaming service outside of it. You have to use their TV everywhere type apps to watch outside your home, like you do with their traditional cable TV service. Sparklight has about 1.1 million customers across um, 24 states. So it's not a small service, it's a top 20 cable provider. And that top 20 number includes streaming services. Um, 1.1 though is a good number of people, but if you think about YouTube TV at about 5 million, it's not as many as you may think it is. But this is a, I think a start of what we're going to see more and more. These smaller cable networks building up to bigger cable networks are going to increasingly say, hey, if we take out uh, the traditional cable TV offering, go to streaming only, that means all the bandwidth on our line can be used for internet. Currently, you know, you got that copper cable that comes in your home from the cable company. Part of it's sectioned off for TV and part of it's sectioned off for internet. By taking out the TV, all of it can be used for internet, for example. By moving phone, by moving um, TV over to the internet, they can improve their overall network by having a bigger backbone for the internet service to handle it. I'll be interested to see how this plays out over the years to come. How many companies do this? How fast? We'll see. Sparklight's going market by market right now, and I expect faster than we would expect all these uh, markets will be streaming only. But yeah, so death of cable TV, one step closer. I'll be interested to see how many people stick with them. We compare their pricing to YouTube TV, Hulu, Sling, Fubo, etc. Is it competitive? I think some of the limitations will definitely make people wonder about switching. All right, AT&T Sportsnet may be having some money trouble and could be in real trouble. So we know Bally Sports is um, on the path for bankruptcy. They missed a massive interest payment this week, and it's reported that they don't have the cash on hand to fulfill all their contractual uh, payments to um, sports networks, or uh, leagues out there, I should say. Now AT&T Sportsnet has reportedly only made a partial payment um, this quarter to multiple Major League Baseball teams. And this is uh, racist suspicion that they're in overall money trouble because they were unable to pay the full amount. We don't know how much they were short, but apparently it was significant enough to raise eyebrows within the communities. Now, Warner Brothers Discovery now owns it. It was part of the sale from AT&T to Discovery. And there's been a lot of talks that they're interested in just getting rid of this. So it's very possible this is the first step of them trying to sell it off trying to just shut these networks down, wind them down. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery has been very hard recently, cutting out content that's not profitable, canceling shows that were even fully developed, and just saying, we're gonna take a write-off on this instead of trying to finish it. 
We'll have to wait and see. Clearly, RSNs are in trouble. A few years ago, it was a major antitrust issue. Now they're looking at bankruptcy, unable to pay full amounts apparently for their content and more. And that has led a lot of people to wonder what's gonna happen. Who's gonna wanna buy them? A few years ago, a lot of people. Now, when you look at the current state of TV, probably not as many people as you think. Expensive contracts that they're apparently unable to fulfill makes them very unattractive. So keep an eye on it. This 2023 could be a defining moment on how RSNs um, and you watch sports. All right, Comcast, Disney, and Paramount. Speaking of losing money in streaming, last year, these three companies, Comcast, Disney, and Paramount, lost $8.4 billion on their direct-to-consumer streaming services. Now, we've heard a lot of talk of this, um, Disney and others trying to become profitable, and they're not. Well, when you see in total they lost $8.4 billion, you kind of understand why. Now, Paramount lost $1.8 billion, excuse me. Um, Comcast lost $2.5 billion, and Disney lost $4.1 billion. And this comes in from what people are saying they're bringing in all these subscribers. Paramount Plus had 77 million subscribers at the end of 2022. How is that possible? Content costs, acquisition costs of those subscribers, and overall operating costs. Um, launching a service, building it up is very expensive. And right now, it's more than they're bringing in. So to keep a close eye on this, Disney's made it very clear they intend to become more profitable in streaming. Everything's on the table, including maybe a possible sale of Hulu. We'll have to see how that plays out and more. But Paramount Plus, um, to kind of address this, their price is going up. So now we learned that Paramount Plus is gonna be merging Showtime inside Paramount Plus. This is a little bit of a cost saving because they're gonna cut out some staff behind the scenes. If Paramount Plus and Showtime merge into one unit, you don't necessarily need duplicate positions in there, but they're gonna be raising the price in the third quarter of this year. And it's gonna be going from $4.99 for their basic ad support plan to $5.99. And the ad free plan is gonna go from $9.99 to $11.99. So not a huge price hike, but it is a price hike and it is a move to become more profitable. We'll see how this all plays out. Um, Showtime, it will reportedly merge in the third quarter. We'll have to see how that works. This isn't just a bundling. This isn't just like, hey, we're going to offer Showtime content and Paramount Plus content. This is a whole behind the scenes situation where the creative teams, the leadership, and more are merging there into one entity as well. So we'll have to watch it very closely and see what happens. There is a good news for Paramount. Their free streaming service, Paramount, or uh, that has Pluto TV, um, now has 79 million active monthly users at the end of 2022. Now, it lost some money last year, but they, they're getting that user base. And I've always argued that Paramount's um, plan for Pluto TV is pretty clear, and that's a drive people to Paramount Plus. A lot of the content there, they offer older content from Paramount Plus with a, hey, you've seen this season, why don't you go subscribe to Paramount Plus to get the newer seasons? It's pretty clear that they're very dedicated to moving people over to that. We'll have to keep a close eye on this. Let me know, would the price hike move you away, make you un um, willing to subscribe to Paramount Plus? They have a lot of great content. Star Trek Picard started last night. Let me know if you saw it, if you like it. I'd love to hear from you. All right, if you have kids like I do, you know YouTube is a huge thing. It's Hard to avoid as a parent, because if you're not letting them watch it, their friends are when they're at their friend's house. Well, one of the things that you know uh, has made it a little easier is YouTube Kids. The ability to have some control, block out certain content, send them videos, have more age-appropriate content on YouTube. The problem was most TVs didn't have YouTube Kids on it. Um, very few streaming players for TVs did. And I like my daughter watching TV on YouTube on the TV it allows me to see what she's watching, keep a closer tab on it, and more. The problem was that meant she was in the wild west of the YouTube app and you were never quite sure what was gonna come up next. Well, now YouTube Kids will be available on any device, including Roku's, that offer YouTube. If you um, log into your account and you switch over to a kid's profile, it will automatically switch you into the YouTube Kids experience with that curated experience for their age bracket that you can set up as a parent. Very nice, I really do love it with that. All right, um, so let, let me know if you use that as a parent. My, my daughter's now a preteen almost. She's kind of aging out of YouTube kids, but I have, a, I have a toddler who's probably gonna get a lot of use out of this going forward. All right, Amazon's updating their Fire TV user interface. So they're basically updating the roles. You probably noticed um, on the Fire TV, it's promoting a lot of content. They want you to watch content. Well, they're using better recommendations now to try to make that possible. YouTube says they'll better um, 
understand what you watch after you watch more content and give you better recommendations, including increased placement of free content there. Increasingly, um, with Amazon Freeview, we'll promote free content, but also they say other partners will be added in the future to promote free content. Amazon's really heavily into the idea that they can recommend to you what you wanna do. You can access the apps and stuff right there at the home screen at the top, but most of the home screen is dedicated to the suggested content from multiple platforms, mostly ones that Amazon makes money on, and we'll have to see how that plays out. But if you wanna learn more about this, story in the show notes down below, do you like Amazon Fire TV's user interface? Do you not? Let me know, I'd love to hear from you. And lastly, we heard, learned earlier this year that Roku was gonna be launching Roku branded smart TVs. Now, there are Roku TVs with the Roku OS on it, made from like TCL, Heisen, so many other partners. RCA is another brand you see a lot with Roku TVs. Now, Roku is actually gonna be releasing their own branded Roku TV. So these are Roku TVs, it'll just say Roku on the bottom from them. It's gonna be coming out in the spring, starting at $119. Um, it will have models ranging in size from 24 inches to 75 inches. And that 75 inch TV will be sub $1,000. Their max price will be $999. So not bad pricing. We'll have to see all the specs and the, and the quality of it. But Roku is getting into the Roku TV business. They already have experience in hardware. It'll be interesting to see how this all comes together. And they're gonna be doing it as a Roku branded TV. Let me know, would you buy a Roku branded TV? I've actually enjoyed Roku TVs. I love the, t the over the air TV guide on Roku TV. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Well, that's it for today. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. I'll be back here one more week here and I'll be gone. Um, so I hope you all have a fantastic day. Be safe, take care this weekend. If you have any tips, if you find any core card related news, head over to corecardsnews.com, click on the contact us, send us an email, we'll love to hear from you. Until next time, take care, be safe. We'll be back again real soon.